Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and the peace of God, our Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you all. On the day of his baptism, Thomas was welcomed into the church, given new life in Christ, and he was clothed with the garment of salvation. Today we greet the body of our brother, and we surround him with the church's prayer. We commend him to the mercy of God, and we pray that the promise made to him in baptism will be fulfilled. In baptism, he died with Christ. On the day of Christ's coming, may he be clothed with eternal splendor. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that Jesus, your Son, died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this holy mystery, your Son, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the first. A reading from the book of the Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything, and a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones, and a time to gather them. A time to embrace, 
and a time to be far from the embraces. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. The, the word, word of the Lord. Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my Beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband, I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain. For the old order has passed away. 
the one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give a gift from the spring of life-giving water. The victor will inherit these gifts, and I shall be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. says the Lord. Hearing my voice will listen. They will follow me, for I know them. They are mine. Alleluia. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not what I have told you, that I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In spiritual theology, we talk about two different kinds of time. We talk about the time that is measured by our watches, measured by our calendars. It's a human thing. We created it. And that reading from Ecclesiastes talks to us about human time. That in humanity, there are all these things that happen in life. They have beginnings and they have endings. They have all these ways to look at things, to sort of make sense out of them. However, in the spiritual sense, when we talk about time, there's no beginning and there is no end. It's the eternal now. And that God lives in the eternal now, without beginning and without end. And when we gather for a funeral to say goodbye to a loved one, we have to remember that we are now in eternal time. We stand in the brink of the presence of our God, the God who dwells forever in our midst. And when we die, that's where we go. The end of our life is not an ending, but a continuation. So where Thomas is gone is not to darkness, but to light. 
Yes, he has ended his time in the nursing home. But he's gone to be with God in a place that we heard described for us in Revelation. No death, no mourning, no crying out, no pain. That the faith he had in this life has found its completion. That the Jesus he knew in the life that is measured by time, he now has in the fullness of eternity, and there's no beginning and there's no end. And God has restored him to wholeness. God has restored him to be the person that he always was, even in the midst of his struggle. The God has let him be the person that God created him to be in the very beginning, a beloved son of the Father. That's what our faith tells us. But when someone dies, it's never easy. Even if we know that it's the end of a person's struggle and suffering, an end of a person's frustration, it's still sad. I call it the fracturing of human relationship. And a fracture always hurts. But that's when we turn to Jesus. And see, what Jesus was doing in that gospel was saying to the disciples on the night before he died that the betrayal, the trial, the cross, and the tomb of Good Friday would hurt. Because by all stretch of the imagination, they were losing their friend, their brother, that Jesus would die. And what he's trying to say to them is don't lose hope that Holy Saturday will not last forever, and that why he is doing what he did is to go to prepare a place for them and for you and for me. And that's what he's done. Thomas, who believed in him so much, has the fullness of that promise. And you and I are just still walking along the road of life hoping and praying that one day you and I will find that same place. That Jesus will say to us, come into the rooms prepared for you. Come join your family, your friends, and be with me in the forever moment of my love. Because the eternal now of love, of God, is the eternal moment of love. That was the mystery of the cross and the empty tomb. That is the mystery of the baptism that we remembered as we began the liturgy. In heaven, if we could simply define it, it's just being in the love of God forever. So our prayer this morning is that he has found that peace. That God has wrapped him in a love that restored him, healed him, made him whole again. And our prayer for each of you is that you will turn to that love today. And allow that love to heal you today and the days to come. That as you mourn the loss of a brother and a friend and uncle, that you will find eternal life with him one day. May he find eternal rest in the presence of our loving God. And may you take hope and comfort in the message of the Jesus uh, Jesus who promises us new life. Please stand. God, the Almighty Father, has raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. So now in confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead.
My sisters and brothers, we thank God for the precious gift of Tommy's life and for the love he has shown to all those lives he touched. Let us turn to our loving God and place our needs before him. The response to our petitions will be, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church, for Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and all who lead us in faith. May they be strengthened in their genera generous ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the poor, the sick, and the suffering in our world, and he asks that we may be instruments in alleviating poverty for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. We pray for one another and the whole church that we may find peace and hope through life and prepare worthily for the hour of our death when God will call us by name to pass from this world to the next. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. We ask for your continued strength and grace to sustain siblings, Kathy Edick, Christine Fremgen, Carol Brandt, Mary Ellen Marino, Annette Turry, and Mark Fremgen, and beloved nieces, nephews, grandnieces, grandnephews, cousins, and a host of very special friends and caregivers during this time of their great loss. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Tommy and give thanks to God for the precious gift the Lord shared with us. May he now dwell with the angels and the saints in paradise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our deceased relatives and friends, especially Tommy's parents, John J. Fremgen Sr. and Helly, Helen Kemi Fremgen, Sister Elaine M. Giroux, brothers John J. Fremgen Jr. and Michael Fremgen, aunts Dorothy J. Kemi, Eleanor Fremgen, and Mary Fremgen Danaher, and Uncle James Fremgen, nephews Peter and Anthony Fremgen, Kevin Giroux, and niece Tracy Giroux Hart. May each of them share in the gifts of your goodness for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most faithful God, lively is the courage of those who hope in you. Your son, new suffering in this life, but placed his trust in your mercy. Confident that, God, that the petition of those who mourn pierces the clouds and finds an answer, we ask you to give rest to your servant. Look upon his suffering as he comes before you for healing and joy, and grant him a place of refreshment, life, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist.
pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your Son, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him forgiveness and peace, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has gone, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of the immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by that same Holy Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration. They may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And again, Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have saved.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and this living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. John the Evangelist and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, the orders of bishops, priests, and deacons, those in pastoral leadership, the religious, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember, Thomas, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters and to those who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, where you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all oh, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Born by divine teaching and at the Savior's command, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and who reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. the 
sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those who will be receiving Holy Communion, please remain in your seats until our greeters on Oculus Hill will let you out row by row. For those who will not be receiving Holy Communion, Please be seated for your own comfort.
this time, I would invite Annette to come forward for a few words of remembrance. <clears throat> wanted to thank you to St. John's Church, to Father Tom, um, to Lyons Funeral Home for your help in celebrating Brother Tommy's life. As many of you know, St. John's was Tommy's heart and soul. He served as an altar boy, made his sacraments, attended St. John's Academy, and celebrated numerous masses here. He truly was at home when he was with his St. John's community. Everyone here at church and those participating in the live stream knew Tommy from one aspect of his life or another. With that being said, everyone knows what you see is what you get when it came to Tommy. He was a quietly present man who spoke few words but loved to be out and about with friends and family. He rarely turned down an opportunity to socialize or eat. Although he struggled with expressive aphasia, Tommy didn't have to say much. You could see what he wanted to say through those sparkling eyes, the smirk on his face, his crackling laugh, and the snapping of his fingers. These gestures are what we loved about Tommy, but also these same gestures which got him into a gang of trouble at the manor. The staff soon learned that all they had to say was, do you want us to call Sister Kathy, AKA the boss, in no time, Tommy turned into an angel as he knew that Kathy was going to set the record straight. I can remember so clearly our annual 4th of July fireworks party that uh, we viewed, we had a, a bird's eye view of the Empire State Plaza fireworks from our family home on the Hudson River. I personally love to get Tommy going with the oohs and the ahs and the Wow. With each blazing explosion, I think the sound effects from Tommy were often louder than the fireworks themselves. Perhaps it was a bit of competition for him. We were the backyard sound effects for all of Broadway. The way the sky would light up from the fireworks was the same light displayed over Tommy's face on those family-filled Fourth of July nights. Tommy's heart was full of giving, be it love, prayer, an ear, or money, he was there for you. But there was always a but. He did fire some of us. Carol, you got fired as his personal hairdresser, and I got fired as the beneficiary of the infamous GE stock which is in double digits now. Aunt Eleanor and Aunt Mary always seemed to be taking one of us on a trip or an outing. There was one summer, as a young boy, Aunt Eleanor and Aunt Mary took Tommy on vacation to the beach, and upon his return, Mommy said, wow, your hair is really blonde. Little Tommy responded, Aunt Eleanor and Aunt Mary combed my hair with a toothbrush. The moral of the story is, a little hydrogen peroxide never hurt anybody. Tommy would love to see Sister Mayor and brother-in-law Mike come to town. Tommy loved to watch Jeopardy, 
Mike would watch Wheel of Fortune. They would both sit there together and be cheering for bankruptcy. Tammy would, uh, Tommy would laugh so hard. Tommy and his brother Jack would drag race Tommy's beautiful Corvette Stingray on Central Avenue in Albany. This was a very popular sport to do back in the day. Grease lightning and all that stuff. But leave it to the risk takers of the family to try it out. As you would have it, the risk takers timed their adventures of racing around the police officer ship change so they wouldn't get caught. That was until one night when Brother Jack crashed the Corvette. Goodbye, Stingray. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt, and but the brothers were labeled crash number one and crash number two by Daddy. Warning, this is not to be tried by any of you. Yeah. And this part I thought was probably apropos for the Next one to read. As the new generation began to blossom, brother, brother Tom, Uncle Tom, for many of us, took pride in teaching almost all of the nieces and nephews how to play back in them, scratch off lottery tickets, play various card games, especially rummy, place a bet on a horse, pray the rosary, sneak extra desserts, and most importantly, how to love unconditionally and show kindness to all. Christmas Eve was such, a, was such a joyful time for all who joined in on the celebration on Nine Broadway. Not only were all the children excited for the arrival of Santa Claus, but it was also a time to celebrate the birth of Jesus, the center of Uncle Tommy's life. Each Christmas Eve, Uncle Tom would put on the Santa hat, sit in a chair by the fireplace, and each child, one by one, we'd go up and get our photo op and then tear through all of the presents that we each got. <clears throat> In closing, the gift of giving during the holiday season, whether it be a kiss, a hug, a handshake, or a listening ear, is what Tommy did best. So during this holiday season, we ask each of you to pay it forward to a family member, a friend, or a stranger as a tribute to what Uncle Tom and Brother Tom would have done. We will miss you, Tommy, but know that you are watching down on us with a big smile. It is written in the book of Revelation that the names of the just are written in the book of life. It is the custom here at St. John St. Joseph's that when someone passes from this life into life eternal, their name is inscribed in a book to remind us as parish community to pray for the faithful departed. And so at this time, I would invite Thomas, Tommy's siblings to inscribe his name in the book of life.
Lord our God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his most holy body and blood, holy food and drink for the journey of this life, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Our brother has fallen asleep in the peace of Christ. Confident now in our hope of eternal life, let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father. Let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in baptism, and he was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life. May he take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our brother to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory. We let this incense rise before God as a sign of our final farewell and commendation to the God who has called him to eternal life. <clears throat> Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother in the sure and the certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings that you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us now, listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your Son, and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith, until we all meet in Christ, and are with you and our brother forever. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. In peace, then, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Who dwell in the 
shelter of the Lord who abide in his shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, rock in whom I trust, and he will raise. faithfulness your shield. 